am Jenny Woods. Today is Wednesday the 27th. I am going to be watching this video about lash mapping on um, the lecture that was posted yesterday. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. It's not to freeze you or put you to sleep, although that's a plus to the tech, but it's actually for the adhesive to do what it needs to do. That's the reason. So, <clears throat> But you have to do it daily so that it postmarks it, you know, on the day that you put it in, um, in there. So, um, uh -huh. So it's just real important that you don't save them to the end of the week because then you won't get your, it won't record your hours like it should. But yeah, and, yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you what, tomorrow, because all the administrative staff is gone, I'm working with you guys, with you guys till nine. So if at some point tomorrow I get an opportunity to actually touch base with Raiden on all this, I will. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I hate to say it, but I'm almost as fine as you are as far as support. <laughs> no, I will say it. I've listened to everything he said. It makes little sense, but then, then trying to do it afterwards, and I just, I could not figure it out. I, I need a, a younger person to explain this technology stuff to me. Yeah, um, like I said, I'll touch base with him tomorrow. I'll make a note on here so that I can ask him again. Um, and let's see what, I mean, is anybody else having the same issue that Nikki is having? Kendall, are you having those issues as well? What issues? Can you repeat that? Like what he is having, are you having those issues? In regards to recording on Google Meet? Yes. 
Yes. Um, so I tried to record on uh, Google Meet and it wouldn't let me, so I Googled how to do it and it said you have to make an administrator Google account. So I was like, I'm just not going to do that. And I just decided to um, screen record and then upload that to YouTube instead. Okay. And how are you screen recording, Kendall? Um, so I don't know how it works for Android, but I have an iPhone, so I can just uh, bring down the menu at the top of my phone and press on the little, um, it's like a little white circle, and it just records whatever is going on on your phone screen. Okay. Lee, do you have iPhone? I do. But I don't see how to do that. <laughs> It may just be a matter of you having to like tap and tap and tap mm -hmm. to see what opens what up. You know what I mean? If you're having issues, you can just um, Google like how to screen record on iPhone and there's probably like videos to show you the exact, uh, what it looks like. And, okay, and so anything that's on your screen, it'll record it, including me being on this meeting. Yes, if, if your face is on there, it'll record it. If you get any, like, notifications, it'll record that, too. So I put it on, do not disturb. <laughs> okay. Uh, that would be funny. Kendall. Thank you for always being helpful, Kendall. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Um, I'm not sure. For me, personally, it's not necessarily have being able to record it's the uploading process um i have pretty good internet service um, and i've tried multiple places but uploading these videos whether it be on google drive from my computer from my ipad or from my phone um has proved really difficult um and i've attempted to do so on youtube as well um does anybody have any advice on how to upload the videos without it taking three to four hours I've been doing mine in like 30-minute um, increments, um, but I have found that if on my laptop, if I use my um, cell phone hotspot instead of our internet, it loads a whole lot faster. I don't know why, but I've had to use um, my phone hotspot instead. Yeah, segments would, would be one option for you because they are longer videos. So if you can upload them in segments, that would work as well. Yeah, I upload, I film in 20 minute increments and that works really fast for me. Okay, I'll try that then, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just set my watch, I set a little timer on my watch for every 30 minutes and when it goes off, I stop it and start it back up again and keep going. That's, that's all the way I found to be able to do it um, timely. Thank you. Thank you for your input, ladies. Oh, and Miss Monica, I will let you know, um, since I got my um, meter to check my humidity and everything, um, okay. I actually had to put a humidifier in my room that I'm using, and okay. that has made a huge difference having the humidity higher. Um, yep. as far as uh, my lashes sticking. So I do think it was a humidity issue. Yes. So <clears throat> you're, consider your adhesive a living being. It needs the humidity for it to go through the curing process. Now, the opposite is also true. If you have too much humidity, you need to have a dehumidifier because if the humidity is too high, too high, either one, you've got to turn on a fan, but the fan may affect the temperature, either for positive or negative, and if that doesn't work, then you need to figure out how to remove the humidity. But yes, all those yeah. things come in. My, uh, my air conditioning settings actually is set up to remove humidity out of the air, so every time the AC would cut on, it was drying out my room, but I had to turn the AC on in order to control the temperature. And so I was like making it worse by cooling it off. And so. <laughs> and any of you that have ever gone to go get your lashes done, those rooms are cold, right? <laughs> and it's not to freeze you or put you to sleep, although that's a plus to the tech, <laughs> but it's actually for the adhesive to do what it needs to do. That's the reason. What was the reason? That was the reason.
Okay, ladies on screen, on liners, do any of you have questions regarding your actual practicals? Like the attachment, isolation, that type of thing. Nobody have questions about that? No worries, Megan, as long as you're back on. I see you. Oh, you're on twice. Processing 
fast forward through some more. So as far as week two, for practical assignments, classic lash set, lash setup and lash bath, practice while you balance on a sponge, lash bath and eye shape analysis. So if those of you that are doing eye shape analysis and you're kind of wondering how do I do that, those of you on campus, you can either do a classmate's eye analysis and speak it while I'm sitting here, or your mannequin can be your client and you can do the lash bath, the lash removal, do the analysis and then speak on what her eye shape is and what the style of lash you want to do on her that's what you would do that's how you would do it and those of you online you just record yourself speaking it out there um if you're only doing it on your mannequin because those of you online cannot do anything on a human if you turn anything in on a human it'll be a zero we'll ask you to remove your videos that you've submitted or pictures that you've submitted of work that you've done on a human, we'll ask you to take those down and resubmit that work on a human. Yes, we need you have to redo the work, okay? All right, so then a lash removal, complete classic strip lash set, lash bath and classic lash, that's gonna be on your mannequin. Uh, those of you on campus, you can do it on a person. Um, eye shape analysis, you'll do another one. And then in send gauge, you'll have introduction to volume and chapter five infection control. I need you to really focus on chapter five infection control because it doesn't matter if you work for yourself or me, the government, whoever it is, this infection control chapter should live and breathe with you from this day forward, okay? It's almost like a marriage. You gotta, you gotta live by it, okay? Now, Google Classroom, you'll have your blood exposure incident, and we're looking for steps. And in your blood exposure incident, there is not bleach involved. I will just say that now because I've seen a lot of copy and paste going on. Um, people are Googling stuff without actually getting into their book and looking at the actual steps. I know what you've done. I'm going to ask you to resubmit your work, okay? Sanitation versus sterilization essay. Not two sentences, a short essay with examples of what they are and what the differences are and examples of what each one are, okay? Um, and then you can go through and do create consent forms and policies. Then for only lash students does this section apply to because they are the only ones that get the Nova Lash textbook um, and that is to read chapter 7 face and eye shapes so when you do your eye shape analysis it's only the eyes Nova Lash wants to talk about face shapes and how that correlates with the eye shapes it's really good information but here we're just asking you for the eye shape analysis okay now <clears throat> looking at week three assignments jump in here and for week three 50 volume fans on a sponge volume fan practice on your mannequin and it's not just like three on the corner do the full set uh, classic lash mapped so you're going to map a classic lash set on your mannequin and then you're going to lash her according to your lash map and we're learning lash mapping today, so don't be like, it's hard, I don't know mapping yet. We're gonna cover that today. And then classic lash layering, and then hybrid set on a mannequin, and a volume set layering mat, okay? And then your theory assignments in Cengage, chapter four, skin diseases. Also be very familiar with this, because when you go take their written exam, more than likely this is gonna be on that, okay? So know this. And then Google Classroom, you have your psoriasis essay and then make it a good essay not just like two or three sentences and uh, the essential guide to lash extension technology this is only for the lash students that have the Nova Lash textbook you'll read your chapter 5 eye health and diseases of the eye it's similar to what you have in the other book but read both so that way you're very okay then you can always find your um, presentations in the stream and also in the same location where I'm at in classroom. You can click on week three, view the material and the presentation is there. So we're gonna start with lash mapping. Alrighty, so why do we map? Does anybody have an idea of why we map? I mean, I got the answer wrong, right? <laughs> okay. So, 
even today, if you don't know where you're going, what do you do? You grab your phone. Siri takes me to the nearest Starbucks. And she's going to pull up Which Starbucks? See? So then you pick the one you want to go to, and it's going to show you how to get there. You got to follow the map, right? So it's the same thing with flashing, and especially when you become an artist or a tech or whatever you want to point yourself, you are going to be touching tons of eyes, different eye shapes, different textures, different lash lengths. So you may get stuck in a funk because it happens. It happens to the best of us. We get in a funk and it's like, I'm tired of doing natural classic, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. But you still benefit from mapping that because then you get a client that's like, oh, I want volume and I want a cat. And they're like, oh, I've been doing so many classics. Okay, let me get on with this. So then you're gonna go through and map your set and you're gonna follow that because sometimes you get brain fog. And so you're like, okay, I know what she wanted, but what was my plan? What was her longest length? What am I gonna do to that? So as long as you have that mapping on the gel pad, you can follow that. Okay, so my when it I interrupt, can you um, show the slides? Oh, I thought I was. Yes, I'll show it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me if it's showing. Okay. So making sure that you know where you're at. That's why we map, okay? Um, and the way you map is, is based off of the lengths that you want to attach to her lashes. So until you like have tons of practice, you can always grab the extension from your tray to measure her natural lash width to say, oh, that's a nine. So on my mapping, I actually want to put an 11. So I'm gonna mark on my map an 11, okay? Then I can go in and measure the next longest lash. Oh, that's a 10. So I wanna come in and put a 12 because remember, what's our guideline? It, one to two millimeters in length, that's how long we go, okay? So just depending on what we see on her natural lash, we're gonna put the length that we wanna attach on that map, okay? So it helps to increase for accuracy and it helps you to easily recreate a lash design. So um, on your consultation forms, and if you don't have one now, but we can look at that here in a bit. On the consultation forms, you actually have a little space where you can put that map. So after you map it there, you can put it on the consultation form. And if you're gonna keep a physical file on your clients, you can tuck that in their folder. That way when they come back, you can pull it out. Or if it's something where you're gonna create a document that you can, um, like a Google Doc where you can annotate on the document, then you can do it that way, okay? It's highly suggested and recommended that you do that for every client because after a while, it's just like a big blur. You know, I believe you've been there, done that, okay? So, and that way it also helps to have that record on hand. If you get her lashes and you're gone and she comes back and she has to take your client, she could flip back to that record that you wrote down and be like, oh, I got this. She left me a map. She left me something that I can use instead of trying to guess based off of what she does or doesn't have already, right? So that helps, okay? And then of course, customized work because who doesn't love customized work? And customized work means the little, the little, the little. Okay. <clears throat> so then your different considerations for mapping. Your different considerations would be your different styles. Do we have that sheet in here? The eye shape sheet? Is it there? So you guys should be able to see this in classroom, okay? And in classroom, you should have an image or a guide sheet that looks something like this. And if not, it's probably in this presentation, and I'll pull it up for you. 
So this, these are your considerations for matching. So you'll have those clients that just wanted to look natural. And someone there. The camera's pointed at the mirror. Not at you. Oh, sorry. Look at the mirror. It's on the mirror. So they can see that we're here too. That y'all are here too. Um, so you'll have those clients that don't want longer. They don't want them super full. They're a little more conservative or they just don't want the weight. And so they'll go for a natural look. So natural, you're just basically gonna emphasize what they have. Now, if they say, I don't want a longer than what I already have, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get those extensions again and you're gonna match exactly what they have. Now, if they have like a little, like a little V or a little <laughs> divot along the way, then you're just going to create that bond or that filler, right? So if they have, say, 11s, 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 and then it kind of swoops down to a nine, maybe they have breakage, or maybe it's it's starting to grow and it, it hasn't gone to its full length, and then you come up again with 11s or 12s, you don't want to put a nine because when she opens her eyes, she's going to have that feet. So you want to go in and fill in with that 11 or that 12, whatever's there, to kind of bridge that gap, so to speak. You're going to fill in that gap, okay? Um, and so you'll just map it according to what she already has, okay? Now, dramatic, um, dramatic will usually start on the outside, if not the center of, what is this, the iris, the pupil? <laughs> I always say I'm wrong. But you wanna start the emphasis and work your way outward to where it goes longer, okay? And you usually keep it short in the center. So in that sense, it would be a cat eye. Right? Because we're going from shortest to longest all the way out. Now, some people will tell you the longest eyelash is a 15. I will tell you from experience, 13 is the best. Just to prevent breakage, to prevent damage to the natural lash. And I know we have clients that are like, I want 18s from the inner to the outer. I'm sorry, baby, but I, I can't do that to you. I need your lashes to grow. I need them to be strong. And I want you to have lashes 10, 15, 20 years from now. So I can't do 18s on you. And if, if that's just not a fit for us, I'm okay with that. I can refer you to somebody unless you know somebody that will do that for you. But that's not how I lash, you know? And you can say that. You can be very specific in that. Remember, setting your boundaries, letting people know what and how far you'll go, okay? Um, but then you can also do a kitten eye. Who knows what the kitten eye is, do you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. She got it. It's all good. Yes. So, again, starting that emphasis right about here and then bringing it out to your longest point and then just tapering back down. Right? So, if our longest is a 13, we can gently taper down to 12, 11, maybe 9, and maybe 6 because. If your client has thinner, more fragile uh, lashes on the outer corners, and when you start working on people, you're gonna see that. You're gonna know what side they sleep on, and you can ask, what side do you sleep on? And they'll think, oh, this side, yeah, because you're missing lashes on the outer corner, and you have more on this side. So then they may say, oh, well, is it gonna look janky? Is it gonna look weird? No, girl, that's what I get paid to do. We're gonna make it look even. It's gonna be symmetrical. So that's where you've got to come, come in and map it and start troubleshooting how am I going to make this side look like this side, right? So maybe you're going to put in some bands here and some bands here to make it look even, right? Because you've got to win it over. Under promise and over deliver, okay? Now, um, then we have a dramatic look and the dramatic almost starts on the inside and it goes long all the way out and then it tapers down one uh, length, I guess you could say. So if their longest on that dramatic portion is focused from the center to three quarters of the way out, maybe it's a 12, then the last little section is an 11, and that's a dramatic look, where your kitten actually scales down at least three sizes, okay, or three lengths. And then the doll eye, who likes the doll eye? Who knows what the doll eye is? Or the open eye? Say it, why not? The doll eye is what is uh, the same all across, right? That's the open eye? That's like a one leg. 
So the doll or Okay. <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. So your doll eye or your open eye is actually a peak. So your short lengths are on the outer and the inner. And then you scale up to the longest in the center. So it draws the eye open. Okay? And that's what you have here. And you guys should also have it on your thing. Do you want this? No, oh. I'm actually doing that right now. Okay. It's all good. I can see it in your face. Okay. So here are common eye shapes and human eyes come in many different shapes. Various shapes require different quantities of extensions, mapping styles, and techniques to create a look that is customized for each guest. So we have, all, and it's highlighted because it's the first one that's going to be on the next slide, but these are the different eye shapes. So deep set monolith, and they spelled that wrong, but that's all good. Hooded, almond, downturn, downturn, close set, and wide set. So jumping into the deep set eye. So remember this one, um, it, it falls back into the socket and it makes the eyebrow, the brow bone look more prominent, right? So <clears throat> this creates, like I said, the illusion of a more prominent brow bone, okay? And you can lash them like longer here and then shorter here so that way it doesn't look too obvious, kind of creating a, a shadow or a shading effect. And then your monolid is an eyelid shape that doesn't have a crease, right? And this eye, and then there's an eye that does, does have a crease and it's known as a double eyelid. So monolids are typically a facial feature of East Asian people, right? And we've all seen that. It looks like they don't have a crease, but they do. And you want to put longer on the outer corner. And then your hooded eyes. Who knows what a hooded eye is? The extra lid. Yeah, it's 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 that extra lid skin that you have, and then gravity comes into play and it pulls it down, and it's just chilling on the eyelid. So it's just more skin, and it actually hides the crease. Okay. So it's usually, and it's just like what it's saying there, it's usually as invisible and it retracts into the crease. So as you've aged, your eyelid space has diminished, taking on a hooded appearance. So it just looks like it's just too. If you look at mine, that's why I always wear dark, dark eyeshadow here because I want everybody to see that skin just sitting there. Would you uh, lash that? Would you take? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when the eye is closed, and especially because you, you'll see some clients that the skin is heavier along the, the mucosa line or the water line, and so it'll look like that and you can't see. So when I'm going to check the lashes, it's like that's where you're attaching um, because that's the line that you're seeing. 